<sighs> you know, having a nice home on a beach paradise is a bit less exciting than I was expecting it to be. Hello everyone, welcome back to our journey beyond the abyss. So, uh, just in the 30-odd seconds that I was standing around, fiddling with all my settings getting the stream going, it looks like the horrific disease I was afflicted with has worn off, so at least we won't have that fiddling around with us. Let's just see where we are in the old quest book. So, what we're building towards is the end of the chapter will be building a flint and steel, and all of this infrastructure is just us kind of building up to that. So... We're first going to need to make ourselves some proper clay bricks, but to do that, we'd either need this unfamiliar item, or we're going to need a whole lot of pulp, a whole lot of clay. So yes, we're going to need this unfamiliar item if we ever want to mass manufacture, as I'm sure you can understand. And on the other kind of arm of this, we, uh, well, we've, we've done log piles before, but we need to make paper. And making paper is an extension of this pulp we've been making over in the soak pot. So we're going to need to make lots and lots of that. And what we need to do with the pulp is, I don't have enough for all my tables, but oh well. We just need to put it on the old drying rack, and that will be nice and even and lovely. And that will make us some paper. And meanwhile, we need to find some limestone as well. Now, limestone, we just need to dig up. Over by the platform, way over yonder, there is a mass of limestone, a big exposed face of it. There's probably honestly enough for you to get by your entire life. But uh, there's also limestone that you can just find around the island as well. I'll see if I'm lucky, if there's a vein of it anywhere nearby for me. And yes, that's looking like I might just be lucky. What is this? I don't recognize that ore. Indeed, I really don't recognize that ore. But sometimes you can kind of sneak it in any eye. Hmm, yeah, that looks like tin. Yeah, that is definitely tin. So yeah, sometimes you can spoil yourself. Ah, yes, but unfortunately, this is not the limestone we're looking for. This is... This is a, a different mod's limestone that is giving us lovely, big, chunky, full blocks, but unfortunately we cannot use them. However, sometimes you'll find the type of limestone that you need if you just dig around a little bit is... No, we're still unlucky. Oh, hey, a bit of copper. Am I getting to the point that, yeah, we're getting a bit too... We're digging a bit too greedily, a bit too deep. Let's just kind of wall off the area because unfortunately we don't really have the means to make uh, light sources. I, I could make pyrotech torches and they would serve uh, but they are incredibly crap to be honest. <laughs> Doing any sort of large dig is going to have to wait until until we can make good old Minecraft torches at the very least. So it looks like we're going to be journeying back to the abyss, as it were. No, no, wait, that's unknown. And I guess this is kind of farming adjacent. Ah, but we do have our papers. Yes, as you can see, mass manufacturing paper is relatively easy. Now, what kind of uses do we have with the paper? We can make books. These item filters are probably what we want them for immediately, though, Bo, because they are... Ah, but we don't have... Yes. We're getting close to time to raid the dungeon. 
because we're starting to encounter some items that we don't understand yet, and that's going to show off the other way that we can advance our knowledge. We can advance our knowledge not just through... What time is it? Where is the sun? There is the sun. It's getting a bit late. We can advance our knowledge not just through advancing the quests, but also through looting dungeons and finding the hidden knowledge within them. So, we're going to have to go on our first dungeon raid, and the quest master, the chief quest master, I suppose his name is, he kind of hinted at what we're going to need to do. Over in yonder forest on the southern side of the island, over Za, we can find ourselves a lovely little stone compound that used to be archives. And those archives are what we're going to have to raid. So, how much, how many bricks do I need to spend on a single soaking pot again? Remind me, please. Uh, I should have just searched up soaking pot. One, two, three, four. So I can build, yeah, I can build all the soaking pots that I need right now. It's very nice to have yourself a batch of four soaking pots. One, two, three. And we're also going to need 12 of those, yes. Well, I'd probably better grab a 13th just because I know that chopping block is about to is about to poof. But yes, notice how much more sturdy our axe is now. And yes, I am just going to chop these up, because uh, getting the wood chips as a side product is kind of nice. Pretty soon we're going to have more wood chips than what we know what to do with, but in the meantime, until we, until we get to the point where we build a sawmill, it's nice to just have them around. Yes, and you see they don't just pile up on the block, they pile up on all the area around. Oh dear, we're so low on food. Chopping is an incredibly energy-intensive process, which is probably why you should follow Mr. Riley Cool's guide and simply loot some wood planks from a yacht when you're on your first trip over, but... Well, this is what we get for going in without a plan. Trusting me to my own devices, what was I thinking? I should know myself better. Hmm. Get out of my way and stop lagging, please. Thank you. Alright. So. It is nice and early in the day right now, in fact. So let's actually just do that dungeon raid. Yeah, we got we got enough money to hire on some uh, hardy men and form up a posse. So let's just uh, find whoever looks the be the most likely, as in whoever we see first, and let's hire a good collection of... Nice, dumb muscle. Sure, Fluttershy, you can come too. Let's go save Equestria. Yes. It's not a huge deal if you don't go without them, because there are ways to cheese this entire area, but uh, I'm not feeling cheesy right at the moment. And I'm just gonna cut through this screw going around things. Yes, you see having having the boys with you is very advantageous. They can deal with that, no problem. 
because we are... And, and notice that those monsters are not dead. They're knocked out. They will get up again after a little while. So let's not super butterfly. I think that's new. I don't recognize that. Well, let's, let's do as all good capitalists do and uh, trust our... Trust our employees to get things done. Hmm, yes, quite good. I, I'm doing all the important supervising work, you see. It's it's the most important job. Get in there. Yes, these NPCs are very, very tough. And these skeletons are dropping a lot of interesting things. They're dropping these coins. They're dropping a whole lot of... Uh, blood vials and things like that. So, the village guide, that's that's one of the uh, books. While I'm here, I think... Well, obviously, we're also going to do any luchas, but I think I'm going to pick up a couple of these uh, unfamiliar ender rods, because I think those are useful for uh, some Tinker's Construct tools. I think they make relatively decent arrows. And yes, that's just... Get those crates while we're here. Actually, I am a bit thirsty in that. Oh, that's unfamiliar to me. Of course it is. I don't recognize water that's not filthy. It's it's beyond my understanding that something could be purified. Oh, I see an ocean right out there. Let's just go stick my head in it. Ah, yes, a lone skeleton out on the beach. Let's just get him out of our way. Good, yes. Now, the, the big kind of barrier in this dungeon aren't those old skeletons. You can deal with them right as you please, but what is the big danger is this guy that we're going to find down here. Swarm there was. And I guess that's just a convenient place for fighting the super butterfly. But yes, we don't want to go down that ladder directly. That is a little bit difficult to get the the squad all up in that. Let's just kind of squirrel our way around and start to work our way in. that will reveal just kind of what we're working into. A nice little jail with a uh, very eccentric master. Yes, trying to send us straight to jail. But we'll, t we'll let the boys tell them what we think of that. Yes, yes. Excellent work. I knew you had it in you. Now, even with the Jailmaster dead, if we walk over into there, those floor traps will start to nibble on our griblies. So, we, we mustn't linger. And we just want this one book that he dropped, which, unfortunately, our inventory is loaded up with all the random garbage. Let's just get rid of these water bottles. It's fine. Uh, fence posts? N no, I'll get rid of them. Yes, 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 yes. Blood. Blood is easy to find. Okay, wait for the thing. Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go. Yes, yeah, so you want to watch those panels up there. They'll give you a warning. And now let us avaunt away. The squad will find their way eventually. I think that if you get far enough away from them, they'll just teleport to you. And there should be one more book. Oop. One more book somewhere within the depths of this dank hole. Yes, that's a... Uh, is it sleeping? 
goodness. Yes, those end crystals are not end crystals. They are an NPC. And if you talk to them, they'll grant you a book. And, and kind of the way you cheese this dungeon is you dig under it and you, you start to uh, undermine those crystal NPCs and you just uh, let them fall into a nice safe cavern and you... You just trade your books in, and you you go about your day. But we didn't do it that way. We did it the more legitimate way. And we could have done this, as you saw, I barely had to lift a finger. We could have done this basically as soon as uh, I gathered up those starting deniers. Just from uh, the loot chests and from Glacier Forest's wardrobe over here, I... Let's just not tell him that we stole his spending money. Leave that as a, a secret. Yes, if I, if I just keep running away, the squad should find me. Yes, there they are. I don't think I lost anyone. Did I lose Fluttershy? Well, Fluttershy got eaten by something. Oh, well. Let's just escort the goons back into the back into the city and uh, let them have a rest from a job well done. Yes, yeah, so you can you can kind of control them by uh, telling them to wait. And eventually they're timer will time out and they'll just go back to their default behavior now that they're safe and sound in the city. And Fluttershy is, uh, she's knocked out somewhere, just like those skeletons. She'll eventually wake up and I imagine the next time I wander by the dungeon for whatever random reason, her behavior will start walking her back into town and she'll be fine. So, with these books in our hands... All we need to do is, uh, well, let's sort away some of our unfamiliar items first. All those gears, I think those bars, the, yes, 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 just start packing things away. Definitely those ender arrows, ender rods, purified water. It, this is ridiculous that I don't know what purified water is. Hmm. But we just take the book in our hand and uh, right-click to read. And there's a little bit of lag just as the whole world updates, and we're going to be doing that several times. And let's get our drink on and then start running for bed. And this might be the last time we need to run into town just for a bed. And I hope that eating these books now is acceptable and I don't need to do another dungeon run because the quest is going to demand all three of these books. But I think that just having them in my inventory should register them. But yes, by reading all three of these books and the village guide, Unlocked Merchant, you see after... Wait, was that... I could have sworn I just saw someone walk by. Anyway. Oh, there she is. And she's already uh, off the clock. Excellent. Good to see it. But yes, just by reading up those books, we now understand the mysterious ways of the village a little bit more intimately. And if I get myself a merchant... You see, we now understand dirt walls, paths, all their decor blocks, and we understand straw beds. So we can now just get our own, and we can we can no longer have to come up to the end. And I'm going to get a couple stacks of these dirt blocks. These are wonderful little construction blocks for very early on. They're dirt cheap. They cost one denier each. They weigh nothing, and unlike dirt or sand or whatever, we, if we break them, they just break into the block. So these are going to be excellent little construction aids. Hmm. Let's 
Let's cycle the old farm. Ah, uh, yes, and all these old coins. That's going to be... We have so dang many of them, it is going to be a process digesting them all. I think that... Um, let's see... Yes, this pack has a shop. And the coins can be uh, sold for this currency, which we have... We've earned some from quests, but we can also just earn it from coins. And it has a bunch of things that we can buy just uh, in here. It, it translates to one coin per denier, and I think the exchange rates of coins to points or coins to denier at this one merchant who buys them are the same. We can buy all sorts of items that are all mostly unfamiliar to us. I think this is mostly the same items that you find over in the little marketplace. So... Yes, if we if we just started selling all of our coins for points, then it would be roughly the same as selling it for deniers. But selling it for deniers is faster, much faster. So let's even even though points are more useful on the whole, there's a bunch of stuff later in the game that only points can buy that deniers can't. Wait, was she selling some books? Oh. Just the quest book in the Pyrotech journal. Who was it? That would it was it Austin Supercar? I think it might be Austin Supercar, and he's a wanderer. Yes, we need to track him down. Mm hmm Yes, you notice uh, one of these wood coins for one copper denier. Can I shift click that? Can I control click that? No, not really. I just need to mash it. But yes, you can see that this is a bit better than uh, doing that circle dance over in the quest book, and it's just going to be, like, close to one denier argent's worth of points. It's not a huge deal. These other coins, though, the uh, gold and iron, those are a bit more rare, and that's worth uh, 10 points and 25, respectively, so that's a bit more uh, worth investing the time into. And we'll just be stockpiling points as we achieve them and uh, keeping them away in a special little place until until their time has come. Good. Let's start putting stuff away. Oh, I have a bunch of other coins, too. Oh, oh well. We'll deal with that later. Ah, yes, and if you ever want to combine deniers easily and you don't have a purse yet, just toss them on the ground. And uh, when you pick them up, they should... Uh, oh, I need to go to a merchant to make my change. Yes, if I if I just uh, buy or sell a bunch of stuff, they'll make change for me. Yes. Let's just put those hemp fibers away. I think those are still unfamiliar to us, yes. Good. No. Mm, limestone. We're after limestone. But we also need to make these log piles just for the purpose of a quest. I don't have enough logs. Let's fix that. Where's my acorns? I should make some more planting space for trees, just because this is a kind of slow process with a relatively fast harvesting time. Yes. More. Oh, we have a bit of an issue. You remember when I got sick? Yes, when you get sick, there's a chance that items that you hold can get infected. And that will cause them to no longer stack with other items. So, And th I think there is a way to disinfect things, but it's only going to come at a stage of the game that I haven't seen. And I've played this pack quite a ways. If it's even in, it might just be excluded from the pack. So, so yes, those acorns were, uh, were tainted. They must be disposed of. Hopefully there's not too many things in my pack that got infected. So 
So we have a nice, lovely bundle of wood. And we can make ourselves... Oh, yes, that's right. I was going to journey over to the platform because it is time for me to get a better hammer. Because I'm now currently on my backup hammer. So let's just uh, put these away in construction blocks. Uh, yes, and the scatterbrain continues. I right, well, let's do that after we get limestone and get um goodness. Now what what coin is that? After we get limestone and after we get um yes. Let's just put that in there. So log piles get Oops. now time to read the oh dear do i need to get those books again yeah i guess i do well that shows what we get for trying to skip ahead it's worth it just to have a bed on site actually speaking of yeah let's go get a bedroll that we can put over at the platform That'll let me compact my deniers anyway. Hmm. My apologies for all the derp today. In my, in my defense, I just came off of like an hour of solving technical issues. Um, the one piece of advice I've read for fixing the crackling mic issue I had in the previous episode. Yes, yeah, you see. Even though I don't think it broke a denier argent, just doing a trade with them caused... Let's buy a stack of stone while we're here. Caused my uh, coppers to agglomerate. But yes, um, the one good piece of advice I found for the audio crackling issue was to make sure that my microphone was on my highest speed USB ports instead of like whatever the crappy ports in the back are, had to move it to the ones in the front, because those should be the highest speed ones. So I did that, and apparently the, my computer did not like it, and I had to spend close to an hour fiddling and futzing and trying to get everything running again. So that was lovely. Yes, for a little while... Not just my microphone, but my actual... For whatever reason, my computer thought that my microphone was a set of speakers. And it was trying to use them as my primary audio device. So all my sound cut out, and I was freaking out like, Oh god, fiddle with the jack, reassign this, reassign that. No, I just had to tell it that the damn mic was not, in fact, a set of speakers. And then suddenly everything worked again. The wonders of modern technology, I tell you. But yes, we have two purposes on this little visit. The first is to pick up some limestone, and the other is, I think you'll remember at the very beginning, I poked a couple of iron blocks that are up on the crane, trying to see if I could harvest them. And now I have a tool that can actually appropriately do that. So once I have those iron blocks, I can use them to create myself a nice... Very nice iron hammer that should last a nice long time. And also, it's good to have a stock of iron in general. If I give 40 or so iron to the millionaire village, they should be able to build their armory. And that's the one thing that's holding them back right now. I think almost every other resource they need to build the village, they can generate themselves. They just don't have a source of iron. No, is that a hopper? I don't think I've noticed. No, I think that's just a staircase. Yeah. That looked a bit like the silhouette of a hopper down there. Yes, yeah, so let's just park our ship over here and just for the sake of maximum sunlight, maximum lighting. Yes, yeah, so you see if I hold the flashlight, things light up a little bit, but let's switch it back to daytime just so we can see what we're doing even better. 
because the water gets very, very dark very, very quickly. And let us journey close to the abyss. Yes, down here there should be... I think that's it. Nah. Yeah. Is that... That's Dasite. Where is the dang limestone? There's lots of copper. Yes, I think... Th no, that's, again, Dasite. What the heck? Get, get, get out. Get. Oh, come on. The Riptide got me. <laughs> We have two different sets of docile chunk. No, just get in my inventory and stay there. Thank you. Oh, I can see why I was having trouble telling because I turned smooth lighting off for better FPS, and because that's actually the default setting. You know, this lighter stuff that is limestone, I think, but it's not the type of limestone we're looking for. What the heck is it? I saw it in Riley's guide. No. Oh dear. Pay attention to air, Dumbo. Let's just heal up a little bit. Yes, I saw in Riley's guide that there should be a big exposed face of limestone somewhere in that... in that, uh, cliff face. There's sand. That's all looking like... I'm horrible at, uh, I hate unsmooth lighting. Let's just, there, that looks a little bit better. Is that, no. Let's get out of here. Well, you know what? I think that I'll just have to dig around on the island, because I'm not finding it. Yep. Oh, well, let's just pick up the iron and get out of here. Yeah, so notice that we're close to freezing here. Our little temperature bar there is reached, uh, has reached snowflake status. It's feeling, it's feeling very sensitive and unique. Mm, yes. You must have a pickaxe to open this lucky block. It will not drop anything if broken with hands. Tutorial there. Ooh, some bread. Very nice. Let's munch on some of that. All right. Yes, yeah, so let's not even try to chase after these. If we catch them, we catch them. If not, we'll catch them later. Just fall on down and uh, catch them the good old-fashioned way. And there's four more. We might as well get the whole haul. Hmm. A stack of iron and a little bit more. Now, can I... Yes, if you hold down shift, you'll kind of cling to vines and ladders, and that makes it nice and easy to... Okay. No. Ah! Flubbed it. I should have brought some dirt wall blocks, and I could just bridge over. Not have to rely on my parkour lacko skill. Yeah, Mr. Okay, can I reach all four of them from here? No, I can't. You know what I can do? 
There we go. In situ resource utilization. Just like a space mission. Get down there. Okay. Did any of those land on the platform? Nope, let's just go down and get them. Okay, eight blocks of iron. Valuable cargo attained. One more check. Well, let's get full air to give it the best chance we can. One more check. Can we find this dang limestone around here? If it, the game will stop lagging, please. That looks like marble. That looks like clay. That looks like the screen flashing in my face because it doesn't handle transparency very well. That looks like dacite. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm not good at underwater mining. That was indeed dacite. Well, back to the island. We'll just have to dig it out of the ground. There should be some around the edge of the island, at least, for easier underwater mining, where we don't have to lose half our air meter diving down. Hmm. Are those stone buttons? Yeah, those must be buttons. Not just micro blocks. Now, I think that using the set home command is technically allowed, and I could just teleport home, but. That feels cheaty to me. I think part of the challenge of Journey Beyond the Abyss is all these areas are kind of wide set apart and you have very limited carrying capacity. If I was carrying two more iron blocks, I would be overweight. So learning how to solve that issue in a meaningful way, learning how to work around the logistical challenge of it, I think that it doesn't get invalidated, but it gets reduced by using the set home command and that I think that feels like it's not playing to the uh, immersive theme of the game. And farewell, Raft. You have been a noble steed, I suppose. That's that's probably just the um, the NPCs having very fortuitous timing, or only just being loaded in. Uh, so. I'm going to sacrifice this um, marble, and let's hold on to the buttons, because heaven knows what a button is going to be made out of in this pack. Is that just seaweed? I don't recognize it, though, and anyway, we can get rid of these two coins, yeah. Just... I don't know if there's a way to submit multiple coins at the same time. If there were, that would make that much easier. So let's just toss that into the sea. Be away with you. Good. Now, if I put this iron on my little choppy block, then... Yes. I can create myself loads of iron. And I think I'm just going to... Well, I'm going to need a new pickaxe. But I'm going to try and de-chunk all this iron pretty darn quickly because it is going to be very useful. Let's just put this kind of... I am going to need to build a more proper storage system pretty soon, too. So, we're going to need... Let's just get all four. Let's get this hammer out of the way not even uh, use up our current crude hammer all the way. Let's just... So we're going to need tool sticks tiers one. 
Do I have compressed sticks on hand? Uh, those are compressed sticks, aren't they? No, those are regular sticks. You sit with your friends. So, to make tool stick tier one, I'm gonna need one, two, oh shoot. I shouldn't have used up the pickaxe. Oh shoot. Well, <clears throat> yeah, it's gonna be one of those nights. But at the very least, we don't need to run over into town anymore just to get a good night's sleep. We can sit out here in the rain. Counts as camping. The gentle patter of rain against your head just lulls you deep into sleep. Let me tell you, never have a better night's rest in your life. So yeah, I'm going to need to build a crude pickaxe. Just to, uh... Yeah, that's just three pebbles. And get ourselves another compressed stick. Because we need more of these. Yeah, that should be enough. Oh. All right. So, da da. Da. And dupe. Now, I believe that the hammer pattern was, yes, yeah, just two of those, two of those, and some twine. No, other way. Yeah, just like that. Iron hammer, and then immediately build another, uh, and then immediately build some more basic tool rods to build another one. Another one of those. Yes, you notice our anvil is starting to decay already. And I'm going to need a lot more pulp. I should have been cycling pulp already. And I'm going to need another bucket. Life is just wonderful, isn't it? And I'm going to need more bricks pretty soon. <laughs> Yeah, we are in that stage of the game. So, let's build ourselves a couple of buckets just so that we have a spare. Please don't do that. And once we have more pulp, we can complete all this nonsense that is boggling our minds so much tonight. Let's start setting it up. I should have built the other soaking pots. Oh. And let's start cycling some more stone bricks in just while we're multitasking. Now, to cook stone bricks, it is going to take 2 minutes and 30 seconds. And the best fuel we have right now is charcoal, which burns for 
120, so two of them will burn for 240, so it's very slightly wasteful. If we wanted exact change, then we could use charcoal flakes, but eh, meh. It ain't a big deal. And the stone kiln will do 16 at a time. And see how much faster that bow drill that we bought is than doing it with the uh, flint and steel igniter? Yeah. And notice how much less durability it took off of it. Yes, bow drills are very, very nice for uh, when you can achieve them. The full and proper flint and steel that we are working our way up the tech tree to build today is even nicer still. In fact, it's uh, instant. It works just like in Minecraft, and it lasts for a good long time. But in the next couple of stages, we're going to be lighting a lot, a lot, a lot of fires to the point that those flint and steels are going to be running down. So... Personally, once my first flint and steel runs down, I just buy more bore I just buy more bow drills. Yeah. It only costs deniers. Deniers are easy. Ooh, that was lucky. Got my drink on without getting my stank on. But yes, just buying a bow drill from Echoing Mist, it costs nothing. It lasts eh, about a third as long as a flint and steel and that little wind-up time it has isn't annoying really much. I should expand the farm. We are going to need a lot of sugarcane. Let's just use up this shovel. to eight there. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the grind. Let's compress our clay balls. Do I have any more in here? Yeah. And uh, you kind of want to keep stuff out of your inventory if you can avoid it because of that bionization thing. Okay, and immediately let's build another iron hammer. And discard this because these two iron hammers will last us quite a long time. And let's start working on a replacement for our flint pickaxe as well. Just while we're in the zone. But yes, I, I try and keep my inventory uh, minimal. And if I can, I keep only things that like tools or food or uh, things that don't matter if they get infected because they're just things I'm going to be using, not things that I'm going to ultimately sending back into storage, you know? So, if we're going to be... Let's... Is this done cooking yet? It is. Let's set another one of those up. And a dip. And a derp. Let's keep that on that. Just make that part of our permanent pocket. Uh, oh, yes, I need... Uh, sh oh, I still have a crude pickaxe. Excellent. And this should be the last use of it. Am I cooking up more sugar cane? No, I'm not. Do I have more sugar cane to cook? No, I'm not. Okay. Well, the good news is that not only can we harvest our expanded farm, but by expanding our farm even more, we can get the sugar cane that we need. And we don't have to be limited to just what's growing. Yeah. 
let's just uh, do another row and expand the farm. The factory must grow. Shouldn't have done those last three. Yes, always must make sure that we have eight or more sugarcane going into the pot. It'll do less, but then you get uneven amounts of water and it's just a nightmare to deal with. So, un, deux, trois. And... Yes, such a tiny little chunk bitten out of it. That hammer will last a good long time. I think it'll last longer than the remains of this table. And actually, let me see. Can we yet build the next tier of work table? We can. And it's not that unattainable. That might be something that I put on the agenda. Because uh, the stone work table not only allows us to, uh, it not only lasts longer, but it would allow me to stack up, like, multiple items on the slots. Now, pickaxe. Do I still have any flaked flint? Yes, I do. If I did not have flaked flint, I think I would just go with bone, because I think the two... Pickaxes are equivalent. Do I? Durability 150? Yeah, yeah. They are exactly equivalent, and bone is something I can just buy. You have to consider what, uh, what capitalism can do for you. So, that's lovely. I like to have my pickaxe in slot 3. Toss! So, let's... Uh, yeah, it's nice and early in the morning. Let's take a nice little swim around the island and see if there's an exposed limestone face anywhere on it. Oh no, it's going to be surrounded by sand. Hmm. So... We'll have to swim out to the shell. Actually, I think off the, off the east side of the island there's a big shelfy looking thing. That's kind of a, a cliff... And that should have a lot of exposed rock face on it. Should be easy to find some limestone on that. Let's take the raft. Not get myself down to snowflake status before I even uh, start diving. I should have put the raft in my pocket. Maybe that's where Riley's Guide said the limestone was. I didn't read it too closely on that section, because I, in, in my hubris, my constant companion of my life, I was like, pfft, I can just find limestone. I don't need to see that. I, I just saw the vague detail that you find it on an exposed cliffside very easily. Yes. So here we are. I, I think that this is kind of a, a limit of where the uh, designed section ends, and it goes back to being... Uh, total random generation. So that's whatever technical pack limestone. Okay. Bunch of docite. Watch the breath gauge. I am bad at paying attention to multiple things at once, especially when I'm trying to think of things to say. That's marble. That's still stupid limestone. Why can we not use all the types of limestone? Hello? Yes, we have our man. Good. We are freezing to death. There is Raft. Huh. 
<sighs> so that should be quest. And now I think we are limited until we either build bricks or we go back to the dungeon again. Well, you know what? Let's go back to the dungeon again. It's repetitious, but it's punishing myself for uh, for that level of derp. Yes. Okay, put away all the junk. Pile up all the clay. Just get rid of the spare. Um, unknown limestone. Frustrating that we cannot use this stuff. Okay. Let's put on another batch O stone. And it's noon. That's good enough. If it becomes night again on our way back, we'll just have a posse to destroy anything that gets in our way. And pyrotechnic chest. And how am I for money? I'm okay on money. Just hire some likely lads. I cannot believe that the quest didn't recognize that I'd already eaten those books. Oh well. I think four should be enough. All right, once more into the breach. Let's try and get through this without any casualties this time. Let's also get our drink on. We just kind of sweat straight through water. Whole body is just a dang sieve. Probably all the holes I've had chewed in me from the butterfly. We don't talk about the butterfly. Yeah, let's just Berserker charge straight through the wall. Pick up a couple of books while we're here. Huh, books are not beyond our understanding. That's unusual, considering some of the stuff that I don't... Are they still dead? Wow. Neat. You're not still dead. Hmm. That almost looks like an NPC, not a skelly. Yeah, these guys get ourselves lots of good stuff. And get ourselves another village guide. Why didn't it let me put that in my inventory? Is that the quest? No. How to mine basic ores, which is from the jail master. Has the jail master respond? Oh dear. Has the jail master re resurrected itself? That's looking like a yes. We'll have at him. Go on. Don't be shy. Oh, fine. I'll, I'll help out a little. Yeah, I distracted him. Yeah, knocked out by me and me alone.
and no one else. That was lucky. Let's get out of here. And now all I should need for the quest is just a piece of wool. Which we can pick up from the good old man. If I can get around his fencing that goes on forever. I don't want to jump over it because then I'll likely uproot one of the crops. And then I would have to go and build a hoe to replant it because I'd feel bad about it. You know what? Let's just... Let's just dump out some space so that we... I can understand purified water now? I guess that was in one of the books, wasn't it? Neat. Let's just completely get rid of it. Yeah, the, the only thing that is different about purified water is it has no chance of giving you dehydration. I don't care about the wood coins. Yeah, let's just buy out all his stock that we can afford. So that is the quest, and then we'll sell that to uh, the village for a mild profit. Of like 20 deniers total. That's only really good once you can start buying entire stacks of wool for uh, profit farming, but we're, we're multitasking here. Hmm. No, I, I'll just sell the holding stack. When I need wool for my own personal use, I'll just buy it, it from him. And I should need some soon, in fact. I hope my mic is not crackling. And that... All I needed to do was plug the dang thing into the right dang port. Because if, if the internet suggested fixes aren't working, then the only thing I can think is uh, turning my quality rate down to 720p and seeing if that would work. I have fiber internet. I shouldn't... Oh, right. I need to... Well, they, they helped me out with it, but I need to tell these guys to slow their roll. Ooh, some leather. Neat. Ugh, bees. I still have flashbacks. And I imagine that there's something I'm going to need bees for sooner or later. Yeah, you're still following me. Good. You guys just have fun. Hmm. I need to start expanding my storage system. There's so much stuff I need to do. There just hasn't been a good time to get doing it. Hmm. I guess this is turning into kind of monster drops. And I guess this is kind of wood adjacent ish. Hmm. And uh, one thing we can do is we can take four blood vials and we can turn them into coagulated blood. Toss out the spares. out the last of those. Can I just eat these books to get rid of them again? Already unlocked. Lovely. Dupe. Dupe. And dupe. Well, at least we got some nice new loot crates out of the deal. I suppose that is one potential strategy, is uh, farm the farm the jailmaster for those loot chests that they occasionally drop. 
as well as for denier coins, which would be a good way to earn money. Hmm. All right. So have a quest for charcoal. Well, that is one I've already solved. And next, it would want me to build these charcoal filters, which are going to require the item filters, which is what we needed the bowl for. So I'm just going to run over to the old man. I shouldn't have sold the whole my wool at once. It's just easy. Oh. Da, 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 da. I accidentally clicked on a pin. That is one thing I could be doing to poke my brain in the right direction and prevent scatterbrainedness, I suppose. If I can't remember what I'm doing, I could just pin it. Yes. And you can see that, um, in fact, our, our base is close enough to the farm fields that uh, the bits that we have dug up are gradually regrowing. Let's just buy a couple of wool. Just so that we don't need it again for a little while. I could also, I could let it become fully night and wander around in the village for a little while and let the NPCs kill monsters so that uh, a bunch of spiders will spawn and they'll drop string. And I can put string in the compacting bin and get wool out of that. Or I could kill a sheep. And can I make any shears right now? Kinda. I can make these unfired clay shears, but they're very... Well, I, I would need wool to get wool. Yeah, all those use the thing. <clears throat> all right. So, those filters or unfired clay bricks. And also, let's get more... Um, let's get more paste rolling. Let's harvest more sugarcane and then get more paste rolling. Yeah, that was lucky. Oh, nope, not quite lucky. Thought I had exactly eight for a moment. Yeah, I suppose it's not a bad thing being more fortunate than you hoped. And it's probably time to cycle more bricks in. We kind of want those constantly cooking because we're going to need a lot. That and, you know, a machine that's not working is a machine that could be working. Just general principle. And in fact, yeah, if I'm going to have machines constantly working, I'd better have charcoal more or less constantly producing as well. And right now... Oof, stormy. Right now, probably the easiest way to accomplish that is just to buy some wood from the village. You know what I should have done? I should have picked up the iron that I have uh, gathered and sold it to them. That would also give me a little bit more money to play with. But yes, if I can sell them 40 iron, then they'll start getting things rolling, but, you know, I'm just gonna, um, oak, spruce, it doesn't matter. I was just trying to think of what they tend to use the least for their village, you know? Because, yeah, they, they have a uh, little tree farms, and they will grow their own trees, but it's a bit of a slow process, so you don't want to deplete what they're actually going to be using for construction, which I believe is mostly spruce. Need a faster sugarcane source, I think. At least if I'm going to be producing that constantly. And you know what? In order to chunk these up into... Yes, these do in fact go into log piles, but in order to chunk those up, I'm going to make the next tier of wood of a work table. So I'm going to need one of those masonry bricks, if I'm remembering correctly. I should check the recipe, but well, I think the watchword of today is hubris. So let us exercise our hubris. And in fact, it's going to pay off for once. Yes, all we need is 
a regular work table, masonry bricks, and a piece of andesite, which we still have from before. So we can put that there, that there, take our backup work table and put it there. Da 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 da. And isn't it beautiful? Isn't it glorious? Now, I'm actually going to build a spare, another spare one, because this is still breakable. It does have a lot of durability. It might last us until we build um, a proper unbreakable crafting bench, but it might not. And it's a frustrating multi-tiered crafting process, and we have the resources just on hand, so why not have a spare? It is just part of the design philosophy. It is hailing. That can hurt me if it hits me in the head. Neat. Okay, next we need a tool stick tier one to build up our clay balls. Oops, it's two twine. And I think that was just two clay balls on the sides. And wait, what am I doing? I was I was going to make some log piles and get some charcoal going, but uh, I guess I got distracted by my implicit derp. Let's just finish this. Yeah. Oh, is that a, just a compressed stick? Nah. They need to be more visually distinct, at least for fools like me. But yes, you saw we can stack things up on the table and queue up multiple uh, multiple crafts at once now. So life is significantly improved when we're mass manufacturing things. Oh boy. We have a bit of an event happening at the moment. Yes, we aren't falling into Silent Hill. We have a uh, tornado. Yes. Can we sleep through the night while that's just happening feet away from our heads? God, I wish I could do that in real life. Mm-hmm. I think it's going out to sea. Yes. But uh, if I were to get too close to that, it could indeed suck me up as well. And I think that if you're sucked up into the wind tunnel, it'll start doing damage to you. Or those cows could have just died from something else. Who knows? Alright. Let's finish the quest and then do what I originally intended to do in the first place before my brain went herring off. Yes, we have this lovely unfired clay brick. But um, we aren't going to fire that on itself. I think we're going to be using that to make... Well, we it's part of the quest, but... Um, I think we're going to be using that to make the unfired refractory brick. And the refractory brick because... We only need one refractory brick to make a brick mold, and uh, that will allow me to just, instead of instead of uh, having to do this entire crafting process, I can just then take a single clay ball. So yes, the most efficient use of your very first brick is, in fact, just to use it to tear up immediately. So if I put one on each slot. I think I should be able to then hold down shift and mouse up and I can, yes. And that works even if I'm not holding the thing in my hand. So if I have a complex recipe that I'm making a ton of, then it's very easy to uh, fill out multiple crafts on this table. And 
let's just dump the spare just so we don't have it hogging up an entire slot all to itself. And uh, let's get a pit burn going. Huh. And you know what? I now, in fact, have some lovely, easily movable bricks so that we don't need to worry about derps happening anymore. Hmm, how do I want to shape this? In the meantime, I suppose we'll do it two deep and three wide. Yeah. Just for a burn of six. You know what? Nah, no, nah, let's not. So, all we do is we just cover it up and give her a light. Cover it up completely. And yep, those dirt wall blocks work perfectly well. All that it checks for is, is the block flammable? So long as the whatever block you put over the top is not flammable, it doesn't matter what mod it is from, it doesn't matter what it is. The only other thing that matters is when you get all the way up to doing a burn with refractory bricks, which will give you uh, more efficiency and it'll allow you... I think you need all refractory bricks in order to burn coal into coke, as well as getting coal tar out of it. But um, that won't be for a while, but once we do that, it does need to be surrounded on all sides by refractory bricks or things that are built... Hello, lag. Or things that are built from refractory br bricks. Why do I have straw in my pocket? Yes, farewell, Raft. Despite us not journeying together again, and yes, I know that is in fact the NPCs. So, uh, just in the meantime, I guess let's fill out some more quests while we wait on things to cycle. So let's take these, let's take these, let's take those, and I believe the item filter recipe that we need to build is paper on the cardinals. Yes, and you see if I just doop, 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 I don't need to go rooting through my inventory once I lay out the recipe. This is a very lovely table. So, now that I have those, I can take some paper and some a single piece of charcoal. And... just combine them all together. And that will get me some lovely little charcoal filters. And with those, there's a whole lot of things we can build. We can build some armor to help us. We can build a little canteen that will store a couple of uh, buckets of water and will make it less likely, though not a guarantee, but make it less likely to dehydrate us. But the main use we want for it right now is we are going to be using it to make this refractory clay of which we are going to need two in order to make our unfired, our first unfired brick. In the future, it gets more inf more easy. Yes, more efficient every step of the way. But to make these lumps of refractory clay, we're going to need ash, we're going to need flint clay, we're going to need slaked lime, which is what we need that limestone we needed to mine up for. We're going to need a whole bunch of stuff to make that bunch of stuff. So, um... Let's expand the sugarcane farm, which is probably a thing I'm going to be saying a lot, but yes. Just while I'm in the in the phase of always trying to be making pulp. And really I should be, uh, I should make the other three soaking pots so that I can make it a half a stack at a time. But, oh well. I 
I don't think there's any diseases I can catch from digging in the not sand. Probably because Bionization mostly interacts with baseline Minecraft monsters and blocks. Hmm, yes. I don't think I've seen any modded monsters carrying a disease. It's only like the uh, baseline Minecraft mobs. Skeletons and zombies and spiders, oh my. It's funny, normally, well, I imagine that once I start making refractory clay, you saw that it requires quite a lot of clay balls. So once that starts happening, I'll probably have to go diving for it. But normally, normally getting these little mini clay balls is a source that's too slim for getting useful amounts of clay from. But just because I've had to expand the the ranch so many times, building up a nice little nest egg of clay just from that alone. Hmm. All right. So we have Zot. Now, crushed limestone is easy enough. Goes into that crate. All that we need to do is we need to take our little limestone pebbles that we got. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. And uh, we take a hammer, go on over to our anvil, and we uh, boop it. But we, in fact, don't have enough limestone on hand because... I would need a full 16 to go into the kiln because this is a very long burn, so you want it to be as loaded up as possible to get quick lime. Then we would put the quick lime in soaking pots with water. So we need to go, we need to find a closer source of limestone. Is the long and the short of the story there? So. Since I've had poor luck looking for the supposedly big and obvious limestone face, and I barely had luck searching on the big and obvious cliff, I'm going to have to build more of a mine shaft going down. So, what I would want to build are these little pyrotech torches. To build those, I would need tarred boards. Oh dear, we've become sick with something. How? Was it from a monster I got hit by? There's an incubation time on most diseases, I think. Eh, so we're just going to have to put up with this nausea for a little while. It could be that my immunity is low. I think that if your immunity is low enough, then you start suffering just from that on its own. But yes, in order to make that tarred board to make torches to allow me to go underground more easily, I would need um I would need to make um where are they? They're from No, they're from Charcoal filter is a part of that recipe, I know for sure. Da, 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 da. I would need to make these stone collectors and uh, build a pit burn around it, along with uh, pyro stone, along with uh, one of these stone drains and a stone faucet. None of this is unattainable, per se. It would be a little bit of an investment right now. Hmm. Ah, huh, good. Charcoal's done cooking.
Oh dear, yes. We're just going to have occasional poison and nausea for a little while. Let's buy some more wood. Let's get another let's get another burn going. sprint out of nowhere. Is it because I was becoming dehydrated? Possibly. I am out of money. Shoot. I should have brought them the iron. Yeah, I think I might be too dehydrated to sprint jump. Or something. Yeah, if I just bring them a nice stack of tasty, tasty iron, that'll have me enough money to fulfill my whims for a little while longer. And we did plant some garlic, and I think that eating garlic would help us get over diseases faster, but I want it to fully grow so that we can spread the field a little bit more, and it's incredibly slow, and I can't, I don't think it can be bone mealed. No. Yeah, see, that got us a nice stack of 12 deniers. Lovely, lovely stuff. Oh, let's just buy a stack, it's fine. So it looked like a stack of wood was costing about two to near Argent, so I should keep that in mind. Uh, sprint jumping, well, nauseous is actually kind of nauseating. Is that garlic fully grown? I'm not sure. I think it has a slightly different look when it's fully, fully grown. Just put that all on down there, and then start with eight, because I have a little bit more than a stack. Mm -hmm. How many more do I have left? Huh. I think I got exact change for once. Ugh. Now the targeting problems of trying to craft while nauseous. No, I didn't get exact change. Not even close. Toss. Yes, I'm tossing away a little bit of money. Oh well. Get more charcoal cooking. And we don't need to buy any more logs for next time. And yes, you see we're getting a lovely pile of ash. Two. That's quite good. Not that, that. Uh, oh, we completed that quest. Good. Mm-hmm. We have to keep ourselves fully fed. The poison won't kill us, but it'll make that annoying thumpy thump happen. Yes, yeah, so on the whole, bionization is largely mostly an annoyance, but it can become deadly if you get very unlucky or are very uncareful. So let's go for a little bit of a swim and just something to do while we're getting over this cold. Let's look for these little nodules down here and hope that we can get something nice. I should have cleared some space in the unknown chest before I did this. In fact, it's time and past time that I expanded my floor space and laid out a proper storage system. 
That sounds like a task that's worthy of a case of the sniffles. Now, I think this coal is something that I actually... Yes, I can understand it, but I don't want to use it because coal is very valuable for a couple of very specific purposes. This is just stone bricks. We can get rid of that. So, we have those cooking. Let's get some more... Stone cooking. And while that is cooking, let us start to build out some floor space for ourselves. If I can remember where I put the dang bricks. So, let's start by just laying out our floor space. So, I'm going to go to the end of this block, to the end of this chunk. And does that look like it'll be enough space for me? And yeah, let's lay it out and let's see. So then I'm gonna go two chunks over. One chunk, and then two. Ugh, nausea, hate, nausea. It wouldn't be so bad if it didn't actually make it harder to place blocks. Just work our way back. I can probably turn that off. Yeah, that should be a nice amount of floor space. Let's uh, move our friend over into a, a nice, more cozy area. The heck? Where did it go? Well, our raft has evaporated into the ether. These things happen. Yeah, still cooking, still cooking. So, we want to... Uh, let's keep a nice little 2x2 two two of water right there. For the soaking pots to use. And let's fill in all the rest. <clears throat> keep it nice and daytime. Ah, good. Not so good. We are running out of space. Let's put these in here for now. Ah, my raft reappears in my inventory. Or it was there the whole time and I'm just blind to it. Thumpy thump. What is it that I caught? Food poisoning? I should look up what these symptoms represent in the bionization guide, but eh. I'm probably going to need a couple more stacks of blocks, aren't I? Oops. Uh, 
Nausea. I hate nausea. I'm bad enough at the game as it is. You don't need to make it worse. I wonder, can I build a... Uh... No. There's no builder's wand. Oops. Actually, yeah, that's, that's kind of an idea. Let's see if I can... Build a line right down the middle. That does help with the nausea a little bit. Kind of steadies me when I'm under the water. Exciting action, I know. I didn't even have the excuse of nausea for that one. But yes, I'm just building out a nice big working floor for me. And eventually down the line, once resources are a bit less limited, I might decorate it. Didn't buy enough. Ugh. You kind of forget how big a chunk is. Come on. You kind of forget how big a chunk is until you have to start filling one in. It is probably time to cycle the furnaces again. And it's well past time to buy some more materials. Is that burn done? It is. This might be a symptom of having super low immunity that I'm dealing with. Or it could be that my carrots are infected with food poisoning and I'm redosing myself with a disease every time I eat them. That is an idea. I should. I should swap them out for a fresh batch. Eat a bit more clean and healthy. Yeah, I think I'm going to go do that. Of course, since I already have food poisoning, that probably means that as soon as I pick up more carrots, they're going to get reinfected with it. I think that an item being infected only happens if it's in your hand. Maybe. So, and it should only, I should only be infectious when I'm actually suffering the symptoms, too. So I just have to time things so that I'm only holding the carrots when I'm, uh, when I'm not being sickly. Which I've already failed at. Lovely. Well, let's just plant the rest of these.
Let's see. Oh no, these are definitely fresh carrots. And uh, I didn't manage to infect them, I guess. Well, let's just keep those carrots off of our hot bar until we are actually eating them. And that should hopefully keep them safe. And that should hopefully prevent me from redosing myself with the bacteria, if that was what the problem was. That was a close call. There should be an overlay on items in uh, Bionization that tells you it's infected. But I'm not sure if you need a piece of equipment in order to determine that or not. And it could just be that we're only going to see that when we reach a certain stage. I think Wayla, for example, is in the pack, but it's locked behind something, maybe? I'll have to read the mod list. But yes, yeah, see, it's no longer the uh, armory that's in progress. It's now a, uh, a uh, lumberjack's hut, I believe that is. So the village is officially off to the races. Let's pick up another batch of stone and as many walls as we can, as we can eat. That stone is probably infected now. Neat. At least stone. A nice even stack of stone is something that will all eventually burn down to bricks. I am definitely building more bricks than I need right now, but... Um, that's all for the good. Yeah, we've got... I should build a hoe, but... Oh well. Eat a little bit of garlic. That'll help the disease get out of our life a little bit faster, too. This has been in my pocket for a while, but it might not be infected. Let's wait for that nausea to pass before we pick up the bricks. Again, I don't know if I'm only infectious while I'm suffering symptoms or not. That could just be me entirely mistaken. All right, wood pile is still burning. Let's get back to the grind. And it's fine if building blocks get infected. <laughs> A fish beached itself. Will it air drown? Looks like it will. And if this isn't enough building blocks, I might have to go and do my farmer impression again in order to earn some more money. Let's fill out some of the more immediate area. Then, even if I can't completely fill in the build, at least I'll still have a usable amount of area. <sighs> I 
Let's eat the bread, clear out some inventory space. But yes, that's this is the Bionization 3 experience, at least in JBTA, is you came down with something, you don't know from what, it gives you nausea, and you're going to be suffering it for a good long time. You try and think of something to cure it. You know that there's mechanics in the game for curing it, but you unfortunately don't have access to them because uh, I think that the thing that we would need to build in order to mix the basic medicinal cures is called an herbal station. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is all the stuff that's in bionization that we actually understand right now, and it's not much. So all that lovely medicine that they're selling up there, all that stuff is nice and all, but it ain't much use to us. Because I don't think I can just combine it in a crafting inventory with the appropriate cure ingredients in a water bottle or something. I'm almost damn certain that ain't gonna work. You know what? Just so that I'm not an idiot for missing a big play, let me look up what disease I have and see if I can kill it. Eat spider eye in swamp water, mine glowstone in water. Uh, cannot breathe underwater, no, that's not it. Actus bone, terra, that's not it. Small green, no. Sea bacteria, no. Clown. Ah, tarot. No. Mm. Internal bleeding? No. Ah, yes, this was the Ebola that infected the Millionaire Village in a previous playthrough and never went away. Weakness, confusion, no, no, no. Hmm. Huh. So, where is, uh, what's causing the nausea? Let's look for nausea, nausea. Nausea and poison. Use strength boost. Health boost, nausea, strength, slowness, no. So maybe it's not a disease that I have. Maybe it's some sort of other effect. Internal bleeding, sunstroke. Nausea, mining fatigue, no. Nausea every 20 seconds of weakness, no. No. Food poisoning. Pork chop, beef, rabbit, chicken, mutton, spider, eye, chicken, fish, potato, carrot, beetroot. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like food poisoning is just something that you can randomly, randomly catch just any time you eat raw food. And it looks like the, yeah, there's the effect. So the cure is water bottle plus dill bunch in herbal station, as it says. So that's already telling me that the answer is no, I'm not going to be able to, but just to prove it wrong. I've seen a couple of dill bunches growing somewhere. Let's eat some non-food poisonous food. 
I guess that's why everyone eats melons, because melons wasn't on that list, wasn't it? Hmm. There is wisdom in the crowds. Ah, yes, and notice, now that they've upgraded the quarry, it actually has some furnaces, and they are constantly going, and they are constantly producing a uh, lovely little cloud of pollution in here. Yeah. I could technically steal one of those furnaces, but I won't. That would just be mean. Hmm. Yeah, looks like I'm converting over to the Cult of the Melon. Melon wasn't on the list, right? The other thing is that uh, once they build up their farms a little bit more, then I'll be able to uh, buy some schmancy food from them that also should be immune to food poisoning. Hmm. Well, there is a lesson for you, kids. Raw carrots are, in fact, very unhealthy for you. Subsist entirely on a diet of of uh, steak or pork chops or some other nice greasy food that's been thoroughly fried. You'll be much healthier in the end. All right, <clears throat> let's keep the roll a going. Yeah, I could have sworn that food poisoning wasn't just an effect from eating the wrong food. I could have sworn that it was a bacteria that you infected yourself from something. And let me just double check the list of unforbidden foods here. Mm, pork chop, beef, rabbit, chicken, mutton, potato, spider... Uh, fish, potato, carrot. Yep, melon is safe. What do you know? So as long as we eat either cooked food or melon, we will be safe from the Wibblies. And it looks like, in fact, I've just about cleared up from it. It's interesting that we lasted so long without catching it, and then suddenly we were catching it a million times over. Was that because we wore down our immunity? Like, were we attempting to catch it before and our immunity rolls were preventing it, and eventually, if, if, you, if you keep doing unhealthy things, your immunity wears down, and eventually it gets low enough that it can no longer prevent effectively. Either that or maybe if you already have food poisoning it's easier to catch it again. I don't know. Bionization is a mystery to me. And let's just fill out the last couple of. I really wish I had a builder's wand. But we're starting to work our way in. It's fine. And this will be a nice, lovely, excessive platform that should last us well into the industrial area. So this is this is a little bit of grunt work that 
we're just doing now so we don't have to do it later. side just so that we're filling in the space that we're going to use more immediately. Hmm. We've gotten far enough out into the sea that the bird sounds have changed. got so used to the other set. The sound of crashing waves is rather soothing, though. Yeah, I think I've made the right choice setting myself up to, uh, to be working out into the ocean, by and large. Let's keep a few of these, just in case we need structural backing. I have another sitting in my inventory. It's a good thing that food poisoning wasn't a bacteria after all, and I didn't need to worry about infecting things. Uh, oh yes, I needed to find some iron clusters before that whole mess got started. And I need to find some more limestone. Yes. Oh, excuse me. Just a moment. There we go. So let's swim along the seafloor a little bit and find ourselves a uh, iron nodule. I'm not quite sure why the water overlay occasionally flashes in front of my eyes like that. I don't think that's caused by smooth lighting. Yeah, no, I'm still getting that flashing. More coal? I'll consider that a win. I don't want to mine those up just because those give a lot of unknown ore. And I need to build that storage system, which is the reason I was building the flooring in the first place. Hmm... But now I'm well and truly determined to find an iron nodule. So I'm sure now the game is determined to well and truly never give me one. Because that's just how it do. There we go. frustrating that we very nearly filled in all the floor before we ran out. Oh well. Yep. Come on, game. What you doing? Was that it loading in the village, maybe? Let's just put these in, because these are kind of eh, semi-related, I guess. No, the, the real story here is that we need to start laying out a nice little Yes. And I should buy more of these, which means I need more money. Which is more or less a universal truth of life. When you think you need nothing else, you need more money. So, let's do one last little bit of grinding and harvest the field. Yes, notice that surrounding the quarry there is now very tall grass all over the place. And that's because the uh, carbon pollution is causing a bone meal effect on all the spaces around it. Let's just let that fence degrade. I'm not going to try and preserve it. 
So now the grass will grow to its maximum possible size and only then will the carbon really start building up. The sulfur on the other hand, that'll just be accumulating regardless. And I think that technically the pollution can only get so dense in a single block before it has to spread to another one. It, it can, it can uh, a couple of little thin, wispy poofs of pollution, they can all kind of pile up into a single block, but eventually it's just a solid sheet and it can't withstand any more. And then pollution will begin trying to squirrel around. And if there is absolutely no space for it to go and it cannot escape up into the sky, then the machine will actually jam. But I think that the roofs on the quarry, even though they kind of have a enclosed cone shape with uh, on their little overhang that has no venting hole on it, but even though they're kind of curved in, I think that there's enough space for the pollution to creep out the sides once it reaches full saturation. So they'll be fine. I suppose if I really felt like being the health and safety inspector, I could go and poke a hole in his roof. But I'm not going to do that until I can actually build a pollution filter to put in its place. And I do want to try and prevent the pollution from reaching critical mass. Because if there's too much pollution in a single chunk, it will start causing debuffs. Pretty nasty ones to anything that goes within that chunk. So yes, we are on a subtle time limit now. With two furnaces, it's a very, very long time limit. Especially since I don't think they operate 24-7. But uh, eventually... Eventually, that poor little quarrier will just uh, mindlessly progress his way into creating a local health and safety hazard. I can help. I can help the clock reset itself by going and punching all the grass around his area. That will cause the carbon emission, which is something like 80% of what a furnace produces is carbon emission. So that will cause that to spend itself bone mealing grass. And that will uh, reduce the smog to livable levels. But eventually, eventually the occasional sulf sulfur bubbles will reach the point of no return. And the debuffs that you get from ambient sulfur pollution are worse than carbon pollution. I think carbon gives you blindness, nausea, and poison, while sulfur gives you something like blindness, wither, and poison. Sulfur can kill you, carbon can't. And yeah, I think there is supposed to be a behavior where sulfur can be handled by turning grass into podzol, but I think it might be disabled in this pack. Is this the... Because yeah. I've never seen it happen on the island. Uh, so... Once we reach the point of making pollution filters and uh, putting it all up on our own area and on the villagers' areas, we're probably going to be seeing eventually all the carbon emissions turning into grass, but then there'll just be little poofs of sulfur around. I think that technically rain can clean them out by becoming acid rain. But then again, the weather in this pack is running off of a mod, 
that that mod that was uh it's making those very pretty uh wispy clouds instead of the usual minecraft blocky ones and that was making the tornado that we encountered earlier and the hail and all that that i believe is weather 2 and i'm not sure if it's rain operates the same way with pollution of the realms we're in the uh we're in the area of multiple mods replacing vanilla mechanics and multiple mods depending on vanilla mechanics so the interactions are getting quite complex at this point yes i'm just going to use a nice and convenient local bed you see that oh block must what oh dear uh, I don't have any blocks I can use on me. So we are going to run for town as best we can. I don't think I can sprint. Yes, I can. It was just not doing it for some reason. But yes, this is the armory. And it's a lovely little armory. Rude. Yes, they sell all these Norman materials, but they are going to need iron in order to produce it. And I think that if I give the village iron, then they are probably going to spend it attempting to upgrade the walls before it can be given to the armory. And they are going to need a couple of hundred iron to upgrade the walls. I'm not sure if I could cheat iron directly into the armory by using a hopper. Those lock checks are uh, chests that you can't use yourself by conventional means. You can't take items out of them or into them, it just prevents you, and they're much slower to break than standard Minecraft chests, and I think that if you do break them, they don't drop their items. It just gets auto-shuffled to another locked chest, if possible. So the millionaire villagers are uh, jealously guarding their materials. But um, there are means and ways of being a thief. However, unfortunately, usually, when you start breaking the expected inventories, then uh, Millinaire itself will bug out and it'll, it can invalidate the entire village. So, if I tried to do a good deed and put a hopper on that chest and put iron into it, I know that taking stuff out will break it, but I don't know if putting in will. And... It might just break the armory instead of breaking the whole system. But if I just break the armory, then it doesn't matter anyway, you know, because then I never achieve my equipment instead of it just being a long ways off. Anyway, ah, yes, 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 money. I was farming up money to buy more storage. Not that. Not that. Let's just toss that out, because four is a nice even number of that. Yes, let's exchange... With that much, it should be even. Can I still buy from him even when he's um, inconvenienced? I guess not. So I have to wait for him to wake up again. Because, yeah, because we let some monsters spawn and he went off and he, uh, he played with them. Buy as many as we can before he passes out. Action capitalism. I thought I bought a need. Well, that's far more than I need anyway. 
which is how we like to live our life, excessively. All right, and let's start to move things over. Didn't I have another stack of them somewhere in here? Yeah. Oh, good. Nice. Even 40. So where do I want to start setting up my inventory storage and crafting tables and all that? Hmm. How about let's do it over here by the soaking pot. So let's start making a nice five by three And yes, I like to build my storage into the floor because these crates are full blocks and, you know, it's a little bit inconvenient walking up to a wall of them and trying to hop over them. But if you just kind of put them inset into the floor, then you get a very nice flush system that you can just kind of walk over. All right, so how do we want to start arranging this? Yes, I know this is scintillating action. Well, let's start with kind of building blocks over on one corner. And let's agglomerate as much as we can. And I could be getting uh, better efficiency if I was doing this in the compacting bin, but frankly, I don't care. So, over on these three, let's kind of do our building blocks. And yeah, I think the sand, I, well, I don't have a shovel, so never mind. Okay. These books are technically known to us, so we can clear out our chest of the unknown a little bit. I think all the rest of this stuff... Saplings are technically known to us now. We can move that over to farming. Um, yeah, all the rest of that stuff is still genuinely unknown. So we can move that into... Uh, let's call this the Esoterica. And, yeah, that's still the chest of the unknown over there. Cool. So, next, let's move over to an entire other row to start building up a... Okay. Let's separate that out from being stone. So... Pebbles. Good. Let's go over to this row, and this first one up here will be Pebblies. And no, actually, let's make flint shards somewhere else. Good. Any more pebbles? In well, one. Well, two. It's both docite. No, that's andesite. Good. And next, the blokes. And technically, if I wanted to really do this properly, I should build myself a uh, a full-on... You know what? Let's even go one step further beyond, and let's make that one the cobbles and this one the smooths. But yes, um, I should upgrade all these to durable crates, and then it can store multiple stacks per slot. Oh yes, I never finished splitting up all my iron blocks. And in fact, that's a pretty good indication of what our next row will be. Let's make this one ores, this one ingots, and this one will also be blocks. 
And let's make the next one kind of our uh, minerals, I guess you would call these. Hmm. Red granite, siltstone. Ah, that explains it. The heck did I pick up siltstone? You know what? Get out of here. So, minerals. Uh, let's make this kind of the raw stage. This the more refined stage. And this will be for the most specialist of them, like refractory clay and stuff like that. Hmm. I guess this would count as being a special boy. And this would count as being kind of refined. Okay, next stage is going to be entirely sticks. Because there are so many types of sticks. Just so that I have it in... Uh... Yes. No, actually, let's make the next stage the uh, the pyrotech stuff. And you know what? I'm just going to throw out this plant fiber and this fiber torch. Fiber torches, um, they're about the same level of light and stuff like that as stone torches, but they extinguish by rain just like stone torches, and they will eventually destroy themselves. So, in my opinion, fiber torches are useless. Their only use for us right now would be not as a light source, but as a heat source. Um, fiber torches and stone torches will um, give off heat. Straw, more twine. And you know what? Yeah, let's put regular old sticks in there. And tier two sticks kind of down here. And then I guess fanciest stuff might be down there. Good. Next row over. Let's let's just dedicate an entire row to various farming plant products. Yes, various farming products, I guess I should say. So... This first one will be stuff that you get from monsters. Second one will be stuff you get from plants. As well as seeds. No, I should have a dedicated one for seeds. Hmm. Yeah, I should make a dedicated one for seeds. And in fact, let's just do that right now. Let's call that one the seeds one. Oh, more monster stuff. Scintillating action, I know, I know. Hmm. Ah, there's some sticks. And there's some more pyrotech stuff. And these are compressed sticks, so let's put them on the more advanced stick level. And, uh, yeah, these are kind of refined minerals, I suppose? I guess if these masonry bricks are counting as special boys, then these should count in these. Yeah. 
only problem I have with putting things into the floor is when you're directly over it, you can't exactly see it. You have to kind of look at it sideways. What I would like most of all is if I had a big wall of them, but yeah, that would be a lot more work right now, and I've already spent far too much time being utterly, utterly boring. Here's some plant stuff. Okay. I've cleared up some storage space. I'll just be sorting that kind of as I go through things. And let's move the crafting table over into a place where it has more easy access. Put it on this side. Let's have it on this side facing this way. Yeah. yeah, we kind of run over. We get our stuffs. We put it on the table. And then we'll have our machines kind of along this back wall along with our more advanced crafting tables. And we'll just kind of have a crafting floor. Yeah. Oh, yes, we completed a quest. This is food. I I got too much into the habit of... Uh, yes, it'll be a little while before I start looking to the floor instead of to the chests. Okay, let's go hunt down some limestone now. In order to hunt down limestone, let's just hunt it down over in the ocean. Yeah, I picked up my raft. My apologies for this turning out to be such a dull episode. I was kind of hoping to uh, be a bit more on the ball, but my brain just got frazzled right off the bat by all the technical issues, and then I proved to be an utter absolute failure on finding the dang limestone. If I can't find it any more than a couple of scraps on this cliff face here, I'll have to look at Riley's guide. I suppose I should pick up that easily exposed copper. I really wish I had diving tanks. But no, we won't have we won't have some of the more interesting parts of better diving until we are in the next chapter, I don't think. At least we're gathering up lots of lovely copper. That is proving to be of great benefit to us. Is that docite? That's basalt. It's an amazing wall full of everything except for limestone. Isn't that great? Let's heat ourselves up a little bit. That's kind of why you want to bring the raft along, just so that you have a, a slightly warmer spot to sit on from time to time. Yeah, the only limestone that's available to us is this pyrotech limestone. And I think there's three types of limestone in total. So we kind of have to get lucky. Okay. And it's really hard to tell what's what under the water. I probably just derped past a couple of limestone inclusions. This might be bad. Yep. 
That's wonderful. That's just a nice capstone for the evening, isn't it? Well, we technically haven't dipped below the three lives we started with yet. We've just spent all the extra grace that we've been granted. And once... I, I, I think I am actually relatively close to having another life gifted to me. So we're kind of running even, as it were. There's the raft. There's the raft. But then again, I kind of don't want to lose the limestone. That and I think I'm still missing a few things. Yep. Put flashlight back in hand. And I don't want to get up into this, uh... Well, I guess that... Yeah, what I should have done is I should have gotten my air from this instead of trying to swim for the surface. But... That's what we get for panicking, I suppose. But I do not want to stand in dry land for too long because... Yeah, you hear that little gribbly growly? Uh-huh. If we aren't careful, we'll get ourselves eaten by Gru. And if I had even but a single torch to spare, then that would be a problem that we could mitigate. But unfortunately, the flashlight, despite us being able to see by it, it doesn't count in terms of Gru dispersal. Which is not friendly to the lore of Zork. Just to, uh, just to put that out there, yes. One of my uh, fondest childhood memories was the uh, game Return to Zork. It's the only one of the series I've played. Well, I, I played the original Zork out of curiosity a little bit. But, um, yes, one thing I always remember was the, the Gru being out to get me, and I would... Uh, be fumbling for the matches in a blind panic. What is this? Cobbled limestone? Neat! So what are these? That's just regular cobblestone, and that is cobbled andesite. Also neat! Mm. Bath salt. Do we have any bath salt in there? I could use some bath salts. That would perk me right up. I should put a hammer dedicated to this area. Because this is also a major user of hammer durability. But hopefully just having 16 limestone will be enough to get us enough refractory clay to get the ball rolling at least far enough for me to justify building um, building up some tarred boards to make the stone torches. How many do we have in total now? Where is the... Ah, good! We have 32. Yes, I believe that... It still goes in batches of eight. Oh, yes. It goes in batches of 16 into here. And that is a seven-minute bake. So. Actually, let's move this to a more convenient locale. Yes, let's... Let's 
figure out where our entrance is going to be. Yes, I remember I dug this down with a crude shovel. So our entrance is going to be down here. That means that technically all the space from, let's say, here, just so we have a little bit of an entryway, onwards, from there onwards, That would be the space for our crafting floor, kind of. Well, we have quite a lot of space for a crafting floor. I could technically probably expand this to like four or five rows and then have the crafting row back there. But I guess I want space for a couple of basic machines back in that area too, yes. Can you tell that I'm bone tired? that my mind is getting all wandering and loopy. Anyway, the point of that whole story was just that it was time to move the stone furnace, say, nya for the moment. And we need to figure out how much coal is worth seven minutes. So, 120, if we get five of them, that's six minutes. So we want... Six minutes for one twenty. One, two, three, f three gets you four minutes. Five, six, seven. Yeah, you want six of them in total. When I'm this tired, I don't trust my immediate mental math all the time. That's unfamiliar. And you know what, just because we're waiting on it, let's get a batch of uh, paste cooking. And let's see if, yeah, yeah, let's start building out some more. Do I have wood chips in here anywhere? I guess I haven't moved the wood chips over yet. We'll move stuff over as we use it. Yes, yeah, so I have those 12 pieces of wood, and is that all I need? I think it do. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and uno. And then we just two, three. And give it a whack. There we are. Now the reason having four soaking pots is nice is because these uh, stone buckets when you first build them, they have 16 uses. And so, I'll just keep that. And so, um, if you're filling up all of those soaking pots fresh, then it will completely use up a single bucket. Nice, even ratio, very pleasing. Not to mention that with them taking eight items at a time, that means that we're building half a stack at a time, which isn't quite fully pleasing, but it is rather nice. So yes, I have paste, I have wood chips. Hmm, I don't really have a row dedicated to woodsy things. Hey, this is kind of plant products, so next row should be refined plant products. Yes, and this is always build more storage than you think you need because it's never going to be enough. I guess this pulp will just be our singleton of this entire row. And then this next row will kind of be wood and wood adjacent products.
I guess these crates are kind of made of wood. So this is more of a refined wood. You see the system that I kind of have here is basic products down the row into more advanced products. Which I guess technically means that I should have the crafting table on this side. Eh, oh well. Yes, you go. After that. Anyway, wood and wood products. Let's see. How many of these charcoal flakes does it take to build a single one? It takes 72 to build one. So, six and a stack and eight. So, two stacks and 16. Three stacks and 24. Four stacks and 32 with some change. And let's put that in kind of the secondary wood products. And I'm gonna need to build a shovel, ain't I? Yeah, let's build a proper shovel. So the pattern for a more proper flint shovel is just a single piece of flint shard, two tier one tool sticks. So we have some compressed sticks. We have a single. Let's let's gather ourselves up a couple of these, and let's move the anvil over to a more appropriate spot, closer to our storage. Hmm. Yeah. It's fine. Over there, because that's also close to the hammer. And let's build a couple of these. Just to have some... Uh, Just to have some tool rods in storage to justify our storage system a little bit further. And already you're kind of seeing how this storage system and crafting system is going to work. Shouldn't have put those away. Silly me. And it works a little bit poorly, but that's life. It is a little bit more efficient than just rooting around in the crates. Because at least I have everything laid out in a way I can see. Anyway... Was this the sticks line? I completely cleared out the sticks, didn't I? Yeah, and I put wood sticks over there. Oh no, wait, this is this is plant products, isn't it? Yeah. I guess that'll be sticks. Sure. And that'll be plant products which I still need. And a single piece of flaked flint. Makes us a shovel. And now we can gather ourselves up a lovely bundle of charcoal blocks. And yes, I did in fact get myself perfect change. So these things burn for 13 minutes per. I can just break them down into nine pieces of charcoal. And if I have coal tar, I can make blocks of coals. But I think that uh, the way you get coal tar is by burning coal blocks in the first place. 
and I don't... Th yeah. It would be a waste of coal tar. Not only would I only get half of it back, but it has a failure rate on top of that. But it would at least refine it further into coal coke. Let's call this a super advanced wood product. Here's more pyrotech stuff. There's an ore. Mm. Basic wood product. And yes, if this is seeming entirely arbitrary as what I'm filing where, you're right. It is. What you gonna do about it? That's just life. And that lime can finally start baking away in our, or slaking away, I should say. Yes. Let's put that back in there. Seven minutes. I needed six charcoal for that. Get another batch going, just for good luck. Sometimes that happens, you just accidentally start a fire. That's, that's just how life goes. But yes, if I need vastly more storage, I can expand the entire system that away and push the crafting benches back all the way up to my entrance, which is a good distance away. Because that'll be where the back wall properly is. Let's get rid of our death sign. Now, unfamiliar item. Redstone. Now, now, this ash. I know for a fact I'm going to be getting buku ash just from... Repeated pyre burnings. Did I move the logs over already? No, I'm burning the logs already, aren't I? Yeah, I burned the second set of logs that I bought from the millionaire village already. Yeah. Let's go buy ourselves another set of logs. Yes, you see the... Uh, the quarry is building itself up a nice plume of smoke. I'm going to do my good deed for the day and just punch the grass around him for a little while. Clear, clear it out. Let nature fight back the beast. And we always get a little bit of lag when we're loading in various NPCs. Just kind of clear the area anywhere that I see these really tall grass clumps. Because that is where all the badness is happening. Don't punch the villager. Tempting as it is. Just clear out all these flowers, clear out all this random garbage. And already you see the grass is starting to fight me back because this area is so heavily polluted. There's so many entities that have a chance of ticking, even with the chance being relatively low. If you roll a, a low number hundreds of times, you're gonna you're gonna get that dice pulling up a twenty eventually. Okay, that's that's enough. Uh, oh, so I, I, eh, nah. Get rid of all that. Just toss it upon the ground to rot like the garbage it is. Yes, we can see that since we were last here, the village is becoming a little bit more uh, civilized looking. Just because they've been working away in the background, they've been refining materials, they've been building up resources, and whenever they have enough, they will 
I could. No, I have food on me. I have food on me. Then yes, you see a uh, Verrier. Da, 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 da. Atelier de Verrier. Glass blowers. Excellent. That is a huge advancement. To have a glass blower running already. Let's pick up another stack of stone while we're here. And yes, notice that I am overweight. Mm. Yes, even sprinting. Sprinting is barely faster than walking, so I just need to kind of slow boat haul this back. And this is the point in uh, other Let's Plays, you'll see someone say slash home, but l like I said, I think I think that uh, is against the spirit of the experience. We do these things not because they are easy, but because because we are masochistic little pukes who deserve it. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, that's... This is me walking. This is me sprinting. We are loaded full. And I think I could load myself technically down with another stack. I believe that the utmost limit is uh, twice your baseline carrying capacity. And I believe that you can earn more carrying capacity by a, um, having a strength effect on you. Or I'm not sure if there's any other way. But yes, I do believe that uh, having strength should allow you to carry more. So if we can find a way to get a permanent strength effect, that's one way of working around the system. But really, the uh, only way to do it for sure is just to be prudent about our inventory management. And let's call this log a basic resource. Technically, I could mine this stuff faster with a shovel, but why waste shovel power? Oops. All right. Hmm. So let's get over here. Two stacks and sixteen. Get me th two blocks of charcoal. We are building a lovely little nest egg, and I haven't sorted away that tr that uh, ash yet because I want to make something for it. You know, I'm just going to keep that in a box for now because I don't have the time at the moment, I think. I want to get this chapter done before I go to bed. And that's not going to happen if I keep herring off in a million directions. So, we have slaked lime. We are almost on the way to getting lumps of refractory clay. More of this dried fiber. I think having uh, three rows of it is sufficient. So let's just... There we go. Yeah, slaked lime. Let's call that a... Uh, second stage of process material. Now the final step we're going to need to produce the refractory clay is we are going to need some uh, of this flint clay. And the way we make that is in a soaking pot, we take some crushed flint, which we can make easily just by uh, sharding up some flint and then crushing it with a hammer. And we actually get quite a lot of it, so that's nice. But we take, in a soaking pot, crushed flint with liquid clay. And the way we're going to get liquid clay is we have to use this stone crucible. 
which is a recipe that's very closely related to uh, what we did to get the stone kiln. It's just with this tank instead, and that is just eight stone bricks with some wood with some uh, wood chips. Very nice and simple. Nah. Yes, I'm still waiting on that new keyboard. So we're going to need seven masonry bricks and a another brick further. And I should have been processing lots more sugarcane. Well, the good news is the sugarcane has had lots of time to grow big and strong. So we actually have a bountiful harvest. Oops. Do not nod my head as I am harvesting sugarcane. There. Now we have a lovely collection. And for the first time, we actually have a lovely collection of soaking pots in which to process all this. So you see, uh, if I had even ratios, then I could take a stack of sugarcane process it entirely down, and then I just spend a new bucket, then spend another stack of sugarcane, and it's very nice and easy to mental math everything together. It all uh, meshes together quite beautifully. In any case... Two, three, four, five... So we're going to need a total of 36 masonry bricks, which is easy, and we are going to need... Oh dear. Yes, this is one thing that you should notice, is that uh, there's a 5% failure rate on doing this in the stone kiln, so occasionally, instead of getting a quick lime, you're going to get a, uh, a piece of ash, and it's tragic. Because now we're out of even ratio. So displeasing. But we must simply persevere. In any case, I do believe I now have enough paste. Yes. And you see how much more convenient this table is. And now we can simply a dupe and a dupe and a boosh skadoosh. Yes. I do all my own stunts and all my own sound effects. So that alone isn't quite enough. We're also going to need a Faucet? Yes, a stone faucet, which is going to be three more bricks. And did I actually keep any of the mini clay balls? I did! What wonderful foresight! And I believe all the rest was just paste. It do. Now, and I'm also going to want to build... A lot of people, they just use their their remaining soaking pots, I'm just going to build a dedicated one for it. Because soaking pots are nice and cheap and easy to make. It ain't a big deal. I should use up that... Flint and Tinder. Yeah. Did I lose my axe? 
I lost my axe, didn't I, when I died? Shoot. Okay. Let's make ourselves a bone axe, just because that's more easily sustained. Oh, I put the wrong dang anvil down, didn't I? Let's not use our resources inefficiently. Yeah, let's just flake up some bone. That's enough as it is. Let's only use what we need. It'll be the exact same recipe as per expectation. Make more than I need just so that I have spares available as well as to use up some of the bounty of resources that I've accumulated. And there we go, some tool rods. I'm gonna need bushels and bushels of these over time anyway, so it, it pays to start accumulating a slight excess. Just any time I'm making it for some purpose, build up a little bit more than I need and put that away in a special place. Let's see, let's... Yeah, let's keep that kind of visually separated from the compressed six because I believe it looks literally identical. Two, three, four. And un, deux, trois. And yes. Okay. Plant products were over here. And I remember what I was needing an axe for. Just need four units for the soaking pot. Really, I should probably be looking at building a sawmill, but that would require me to go swimming for diorite because you need it to build the special saw blades that the sawmill uses. And diorite is one resource I do not know a good source of. The only source I know is getting it out of gravel. Anyway, let's take a nice building block over here. And let's uh, just boosh it kind of in our growing machine area. So we're going to build that one level higher. Put it on there. Soak and pot down there. Pour out into it. Yep. So to get liquid clay, we're going to need to melt down regular old clay and we'll get a a full bucket of it from a block or 250 millibuckets and so to make eight crushed flint into eight flint clay we're going to need two buckets of clay which means we're going to need to make ourselves and i believe that in the compacting bin four becomes yeah And this is the big devourer of clay. I should move this. Kind of start accumulating everything into the working area. Mm, this is kind of an anvil -y thing. Yes. It's all starting to come together, I think. I'm achieving a nice little zone of efficiency. Now, 
And how long did that needed to be baked for? Three minutes. Which I believe is unfortunately just three pieces of charcoal because, yeah, that'll be four minutes. But otherwise it would be uh, two minutes and 40 seconds. It's just short. And unfortunately you can't pile up multiple types of fuel in there. So yes, I need to use up this flint and tinder. Yeah, you see how much slower that is than the than the bow drill? And it took a huge chunk out. The bow drill is far efficient and far more convenient because you just buy them. So... Hmm. Charcoal looks like it's done. And we are working our way through. I don't have enough sugar cane to do a full batch. Eh, nah, let's just wait on it. Now, you know what? I do need to start clearing the floor space. So that'll be our means of getting excess sugar cane to fill out the batch. Just clearing out more of our floor. Goodness, I'm being tremendously unlucky in terms of getting sugar cane, aren't I? Honestly, I think a good portion of this I'm just going to throw out. At least the dirt chunks and maybe the sand. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll combine the dirt in my hand. That's wasteful compared to doing it in the compacting basin, but it don't matter. But the sand I think I'll just throw out. That sounds like a plan to me. There we go. So. And we're building us a nice supply of dirt just as a side product. Keeping our supplies of clay well stocked. Yes, I'm beginning to I'm beginning to be proud of myself for picking the beach as the objectively correct area to live at least while the resources hold out. Yeah, I knew I said I would throw out the sand, but why waste? I think it can be used for making glass just like you would expect. Let's start making the flint. Do I have enough flint? That's a good question. But yes, I, I like to keep my pickaxe on slot 3 because I usually have a melee weapon in slot 1 and a ranged weapon in slot 2. And that's just... Uh, that's just the model that I've worked myself up to over ages of playing the game. And note that this flint will uh, succumb to but a single boop. So you kind of just dance back and forth on your fingertips. This is refined mineral product. Yeah, so we're going to need 16 of it in total in order to get rid of two buckets of clay. No, wait, we're only going to need eight of it in total, ain't we? Yeah, it was uh, 
two fifty per, so four then eight, yeah. Well, eight is what'll go into there anyway. So now we're going to have slaked lime. We are going to have flint clay. We're going to have ash, and we are going to have clay balls. We have refractory clay completely assembled. But yes, I, I like to make a little kind of dedicated stand for the melter because uh, if if I look in the uses, do I know any more uses for it yet? I know that there's a number of them. I can technically upgrade it to. Yes, it makes. Uh, I, I was pretty sure that there was a couple of other things that melt. I know it can melt lava. Mm, it can melt cobblestone into lava. All right, so remind me, what's the... Oh, yes, I need ash. And I'm storing my ash away until... Until I am... Uh, until I have... A... Uh, is it called a stash? Yes. I want to make some stashes for the things I get the most of, so I'll probably have one for sugarcane. I'll have one for ash, because you're just going to get stacks and stacks of it. Anyway, refractory clay. Yes, slaked lime on the sides. And then our four clay balls. And... Let's just make as much as we can with the slaked lime that we have. That also fits our flint clay exactly, which is convenient. Okay, so we have these lumps of refractory clay, and um, yes, we need four of them to make a single clay ball, and then we're going to need two clay balls in order to upgrade our brick. So, these clay balls, that's going to require two of my charcoal filters. Which, have I already put away my charcoal filters? Do I still have my charcoal filters? I don't think I've spent them on anything. No, I just haven't put them away yet. So, let me remind myself of the recipe. Okay. Let's put our charcoal filters as a more refined product, yeah. And in fact, I'm going to start turning half of my pulp into paper whenever I harvest it. Just to kind of spread out the slots. And I think paper will go in the second tier of refined plant products. Hmm. Actually, wait. If this is the second tier, what should the top tier be? Let's rearrange this row and this will be the second row yeah and then if there's anything that uses like charcoal filters sure yeah we're, we're, we're playing this a bit fast and loose it's fine I'm putting far more thought into it than it deserves anyway I wanted pulp on the four sides and the refractory clay on the corners? Yes. And then just get her done. And now I need to track down where the heck I put that. Give it two big old balls. Ooh, this feels good. Now, here's the question. Can we avoid rolling a nat one? <laughs> 
with the luck I have, it's no guarantee. I have had this one fail before. It sucks when it does. Here we go. I think that regardless of the outcome here, if the burn works, then I will use that brick to make my brick mold and I'll call that a night. If it don't work, I will call it a night and then probably go curl up and cry. <clears throat> It's mainly to admit your feelings. Y you know, it's it's just proper emotional. This is it's semi refined because it's yeah, it's not a full clay ball. But on the other hand, it's a very special boy. Hmm. This that's one of those unusual bits of taxonomy that would probably have. Archaeologists and paleontologists debating with each other. Hmm. Let's call this a... That crate issue. I got anything in the crates left that needs to be sorted away. Bone meal. That's kind of a... I guess I could call this adjacent to mobs. Hmm. I could call this a refined wood product, because I believe... Eh, no, it's more of a refined mob product, I guess. Usually you can build them fairly easily out of Tinker's Construct Patterns, but then again, Tinker's Construct Patterns... Hmm. Hmm. They ain't easy in this pack. I guess I could consider this related to plant products. And this is related to mob products. And this... I'll call hmm, there really isn't I guess that this could be a miscellany yeah now I think I'm just down to I'll call this an ore and I will call beaver a fish so that they can be eaten on good Sunday I'll call this a find mob product. I don't really have a crate for refined mob product. Hmm, miscellany. This is kind of... I don't really have a finished goods crate anywhere. Hmm. Maybe it's time to make a fourth row. Eh. No. Hmm. Did I actually run these down evenly without any change? Neat. And here we go. Ah. That's the unfortunate thing when you when you screw it up. Oh well. Sugarcane hasn't really grown any. Clear more floor. Just to have something to do while we find out just how lucky we are. I'm not digging into the stairwell layer. Let's 
So yeah, this is where the back wall will be, I suppose. Even though this is kind of the chunk border. Hmm. Maybe I should say that the entryway is just an alcove. If and when I ever decorate, I'll figure out something so that it looks kind of neat, maybe, possibly. Like, kind of, I guess I'll, I'll build the walls up around the outside of the chunk borders. And then I can have it kind of coming in here. Maybe, maybe I'll, uh make a landing higher up so we can do this in two floors? No, no. Because then I would need to figure out something wonky for ventilation. And uh, ventilation is going to be a tough enough problem as it is. All this pollution, we're going to need to find a way to get it out. And uh, part of the reason I'm building a big square is so that when I'm building the roof, I can just kind of build a pyramidal roof because Pollution will always try and move up over any other move it can do. If it's just up against a flat roof and it can't move up, it'll slowly inch around. Like you, you might see them dancing around side to side very occasionally up in the sky over there. But you see that's a very slow and a very random movement. So if I just have a big flat roof with a with a pokey chimney in the center, then almost nothing will ever be ventilated. In order to get stuff funneled into a chimney, then I need to make sure that it's urged to move vertically. Oh, goodness gracious, we have a brick. We have a brick, everybody. Achievement unlocked. Brick achieved. But but yes, by forcing it up a pyramidal shape, its urge to move up will also force it to move inwards towards the center. So then, at the very center, we can be funneling the pollution all into one place and I can put a filter on it. And that is the basic design for how this, how this base is going to work, at least in this initial floor. I know it, it's a pretty huge floor, but eventually I'm going to run out. When I start getting into, like, immersive engineering, there's going to be some damn huge machines that ain't going to fit in here. And I'm also going to need uh, massive parallelization, so I'm going to need just big masses of machines. So eventually, I will outgrow this big floor space. But by the time I outgrow it, I should be able to build myself ventilation that can handle more complex-shaped buildings instead of uh, having to have a big, probably going to be dopey-looking pyramidal roof. I can make myself a sexy, flat, modern roofing. So I'm going to need... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm... I'm, uh... I'm very, very tired. <laughs> anyway... I believe that this is the pattern for what I'm making. Yeah, that's everything laid out evenly. Yep. And then I think the charcoal filters was... One in the center with more paper on the sides. Yep. Okay, so that's the charcoal filters. Next, do I already have enough? No, I'm missing just one dang tool rod. Well, that's our rule, is uh, 
if you don't have quite enough, then uh, build more than enough so that you build up the stock. So let's get all our compressed sticks. Let's split some bricks. Two, four, six, eight. That should be enough. And then let's uh, go. I should process some more sugarcane because I'm about to use a lot of pulp. Believe it or not, this floor space that I knocked out today is far and away not even approaching some of the mega projects that I'm pondering. Like, um, one thing I'm thinking is I might want to go across the entire island once I can build Minecraft torches and light up this entire dang island. Because then, uh, later on, some of the monsters that start spawning get a little bit ridiculous. Like, uh, things will happen, like, Endermen will aggro regardless of whether you've seen them or not, and there's Doctor Who Weeping Angels. Yes, I think I laid it out for eight. So, being able to ensure that there is no monsters around is going to be uh, the only way to make knights safe and work 24-7, which is something I want to do because... I'm not sure if this is still the case, but in uh, early versions of Regrowth, like back in 1.710, at the very least, villager children would only grow up when they're sleeping at night. So if you're sleeping through every single night, then you are uh, never, they're never going to grow up. Oh, that feels good. That feels very, very good. We have a brick mold, people. We have a bunch of sticks. This is a joyous, joyous day. I'm watching you through it. Can I line it up with my eye sockets? No. 